So first of all, thank you very much for this very nice invitation. And I'm looking very much forward to uh, discussing with you. Um, so, um, you know, I was born in Karachi. So, um, and uh, have I did also my, uni basically my uh, early education there uh, and followed by um, basically um, very early on, we moved to different countries. For example, we went to United Arab Emirates, then moved back to Karachi again, then moved to Paris. This is where my family right now resides. So I have been exposed to very many different cultures uh, in the meantime. And during the university time, I moved to the UK. Uh, since in all uh, the stages of my, my earlier uh, kind of development, I was always going through the English system of education. So it was much easier to go to university um, in, in the UK. So I was in London. Uh, this is where I did then my university and then my PhD. And so in a, this is in a nutshell, my educational career uh, in different countries. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm very interested in, in uh, really trying to understand how our body works and how, for example, from starting from a single cell that we all start, we can actually differentiate into a, a compendium of very many different organs with very specialized uh, functions. So how exactly the same genetic material in our cells can be interpreted differently uh, is fascinating. And this is an area uh, of research that is very broadly known as the area of epigenetics. Um, and that's what I'm trying to understand how environmental influences, but also components within our cells uh, generate this plasticity, yet also stability uh, to be able to enable different functions in the cell. Yeah, so I was studying biology at the university. So that's that's how I, I became uh, interested in, uh, you know, I was always interested in biology, but, you know, really trying to understand the molecular mechanism was really where, when I was doing A-levels and further uh, doing my bachelor's degree, that that I thought that it was very interesting to get to go into the nitty gritty details of how things function. Um, so that really initiated my interest uh, but also what was really nice was to do these interim projects uh, in the labs during the course of my, uh, my university. And, and, you know, doing experiments were, was very exciting because you didn't know what the outcome will be. And that's when I thought, okay, I need to go into this direction of research. Um, and that's how then I applied for PhDs and, and, and never looked back since then. I think that's one of the most exciting uh, kind of jobs to have because it's ever changing and you don't know what you're going to get out of it. So you are always have, uh, you know, a, a lot of curiosity and excitement. Uh, it's never boring in research. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, maybe it's, it's cliche, but, but, uh, Right at the beginning, I wanted to um, to do medicine because I didn't know anything else. Uh, and that's what, uh, you know, the, the environment was very conducive to whether you become a, a, a doctor or not, or a lawyer or not, like, you know, some of these classical jobs that, that people can associate with uh, as a child. Um, but as I went into, as I said, um, into, you know, I got more deeper knowledge uh, into the different subjects. What I was really very much interested in is how things work. Um, how, what are the molecular mechanisms? Because you, can, you cannot heal people without knowing what is exactly happening in our body. And that's where my focus is, is lying. Um, so it's, it's not that, you know, I, I woke up as a five-year-old thinking, yeah, I'm going to do epigenetic research. No, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> but, uh, but I definitely wanted to do something. I, I just couldn't see myself um, just sitting at home. This I never could could imagine, <laughs> and and but how you know my path will um, develop was was unknown, and and you know step by step you you go into different steps and see whether how you're doing and take the next steps according to your previous successes, and that's what I've I've done. You know, Max Planck Society is really an outstanding organization. Um, that uh, really 
um, favors uh, or acknowledges importance of basic fundamental research. I think it's it's very important to uh, to understand how basic principles of biology, but also other uh, topics, we have many different sections, um, is done because only then we can understand what's happening really in the in the bigger world. So the the um, the aim of, of Max Planck Society is really to promote outstanding, uh, excellent research. This is basically the key with which we operate. And, and also it's, it's really about the people rather than programs. So we really identify top people that are, um, are absolutely outstanding in their particular area of research and provide them with the possibility to do research without really um, micromanaging them. And that's really, um, really wonderful and a unique opportunity that it doesn't exist really um, with this autonomy anywhere else in the world. No, of course not. <laughs> So of course I didn't I didn't expect that that I'll become the international vice president. By the way, there was uh, there was there were also other uh, vice presidents before an international vice president uh, before me, but not a female international vice president. It's a superb job, a job with a lot of responsibility, um, which I take of course very seriously, and uh, it's very exciting because it it. Uh, basically gives me the possibility to shape the shape the society contribute towards shaping that the society um, and just generally uh, diversity is is very healthy in any organization so uh, I think that that angle to bring in gender diversity uh, and issues related just generally to gender diversity um, is is fantastic and I'm very happy to be contributing towards that. Yeah, I think go for it. I think, you know, giving up is not an option. I think one needs to, uh, we need role models and we need more women to come forward to be able to address this. And actually, I personally think that this this large family um, uh, kind of culture that we have uh, in Pakistan actually should enable more women to go to work because you have your nana nani, dada dadi that are, are present helping uh, you know, in, in big, bigger family con uh, constellations uh, to be able to take care of childcare issues that normally in European uh, societies is much more difficult. Uh, so in principle, it should be easier than more difficult. But what we find is, is the contrary. And um, I think one needs to find very good ways to show that it, that, that it is possible and it is definitely doable and it is also very healthy uh, for both men and women, and of course, if they want uh, to pursue a career, because you don't want um, that later on in life, you are frustrated because you wanted to achieve something and you didn't. And I think that's important that more examples we have, um, you know, the more it will be acceptable. Yeah, of course, you can imagine, I was like, extremely happy to be given this award and it's actually a great honor and privilege to get this award it's the the highest award that you can get via the the german uh from the german research foundation um and uh gives you really a, a lot of flexibility it, it's it's purely dedicated for research so the the funding that you get uh, enables you to be able to uh, uh, uh to do research uh, very flexibly without any ties attached and this is really very helpful especially in the area that I'm working on, um, the, you know, the experiments we do are very expensive. So we are always on the lookout for, for additional funds and, um, and, and just really the credibility and the acknowledgement that people appreciate the work you have done uh, was very rewarding. And especially for people in my lab, um, we celebrated with uh, lots of cakes and uh, cookies and stuff like this uh, because it's obviously it's an acknowledgement for their work. So it, it really, um, for me, it's, it's really the, the team that, that deserves to celebrate this, this prize rather than me alone because without them, uh, it will not work out. Yeah, I think it's, first of all, I think it's, it's really an ideal job, at least for me, because you have a lot of flexibility.
to to kind of go in in when you go in the research direction you don't know exactly wh- where you're going to end up so that by itself on the one side may bring some anxiety but it brings a lot of excitement because you're going where nobody has gone before so by itself it's it's very exciting um and of course you know the uh, res- career in research or academia prepares you for many other jobs later on as well of course if everything goes well you can follow a career path but the way to approach how to think how to think about doing the right controls putting thing in the right context prepares you for many uh, areas to do systematic thinking so i think this is falling on going deeper into into this 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 line of research prepares you for many other things just not uh, academic career why do we do this in germany i mean many countries in the world are doing outstanding research but but germany is very much interested in 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 seeing really research as the future and i think that's why they have also invested um you know over the the last few years really uh, heavily into science and education which of course pays off because science is the future if we understand many things better we will be able to solve many of the problems better so um you know i would highly encourage people to um to use these opportunities if you have but of course i think you know a, a healthy a uh, situation will be where you basically have people coming and going come you know from pakistan to 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 germany and vice versa so that you can also go and populate back uh, what you have learned and have this exchange um is very healthy internationally as well not just germany specific my message to the to the young scientists is really don't give up uh if you know if you have to struggle and you have to fall down just get up and 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 um and try again i think it's very important to keep up the optimism especially when when the going gets tough the tough gets going that's that's the the motto that i i um very much favor and especially for the young women out there i think it's great if you if you if you have the wish to be able to go out and and um uh, pre- uh, you know follow a career of higher education um is fantastic to expose yourself um and learn different things because this helps not only you but also the next generation that is coming after you uh so i think overall uh, if we can build um you know overall level of education um uh, in pakistan to to uh, a higher level this will be very much benefiting also the country a lot and so i think investing in education is the best gift you can give to the next generation so uh we should start from ourselves um doing better